living aboard when your boat is on the hard, that is, in a boatyard, isn't easy, but sometimes it's necessary. So how do you cope in the galley when you have to do it? Hi, I'm Carolyn Sherlock, and on this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, I'll share my best tips for when you're living in the boatyard. First, though, let's talk about the sponsor of today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast. It's Marine Depot Direct, your source for affordable, quality stainless steel hardware. Upgrade your boat with marine-grade stainless steel hardware and accessories like port lights, deck hatches, through hulls, and more. Make your boat restoration easy and affordable. Use coupon code BG15 for 15% off your first order. MarineDepotDirect.com. Affordable stainless for your boat. Is it possible to live aboard your boat when it's hauled out? The first time we hauled, just for a few days to paint the bottom, my inclination was to say no because I'm terrified of ladders. Heights didn't bother me, ladders did. However, once we started investigating motels within walking distance, I decided that I really didn't want to spend the money, plus the expense of eating all our meals out. I could deal with that ladder. The yard that we were in had a nice bathroom with tons of hot water for showers and a wonderful outdoor sink for dishes. The only bad thing was having to go down the ladder every time we needed the bathroom, even in the middle of the night. I figured out a bunch of things in those few days. Six months later, we hauled again for a total of four months on the hard as we did major work on the boat, replacing the teak decks with fiberglass, painting the boat, some rigging upgrades, and more. And we stayed aboard all but a couple of days while the boat was being painted. That totally got me over my fear of ladders. Four months of living on the hard taught me a lot about the galley issues that arise when living on a boat up in the air. A few tips for you. Well, first, it's much easier to go up and down the ladder multiple times a day if the ladder is the proper length and placed so that the top rung is right at the gunnel. Not having to step up and over and not having the top step a few inches below the gunnel makes it a lot safer. Of course, make sure that the ladder is securely tied to the boat at the top, and it's best to tie both sides of the ladder so that it can't twist or flip over if you lose your balance a tiny bit and put all your weight on one side. Now, as you may be coming up the ladder with a load of provisions, as you step aboard from the ladder, don't use the lifeline stanchions as grab bars. Constantly pulling them can cause leaks. Now, we discovered several ways of getting provisions aboard, depending on what an item was. The easiest way is to put everything in a day pack and carry it up on your back, which leaves both hands free. Now, don't just sling the day pack over one shoulder, as it'll swing as you go up the ladder and possibly throw you off balance. Put it over both shoulders. Now, with two of us, one of us would often go part way up, and the one on the ground could hand lightweight items to the person on the ladder, who could then set them on deck. But don't try this with heavy items, as so you can throw them off balance and off the ladder. For dirty and clean dishes to and from the washing sink, we'd put everything in a five-gallon bucket and use a line to haul it up and lower it down. For small, heavy items, we'd do the same, but use the block and tackle from the outboard crane good news was, there's no need to conserve water when doing dishes at the yard sink. We'd also use the bucket and our large dry bags to hold other items, and either the line by itself or the crane. You get pretty creative when you have to. Power board wasn't a problem in the yard. They provided a shore power connection. We could use as much as we wanted, which means we had refrigeration. Water was also not a problem as we were able to fill our decks whenever we wanted with exactly the same good water that was available on their dock. But there was that issue of the water drains. A few boats opted to use their drains as normal, with a five-gallon bucket below, which would catch most of it. We never did that. Instead, I kept a five-gallon bucket in the galley and a dish tub in the sink. 
and he spilled water just went into the dish tub, and I dump it into the five-gallon bucket, along with the dirty dishes, to go down to the washing sink. Any cooking water that I would normally put down the drain went into the five-gallon bucket, too. As long as you don't let the bucket get over about half full, it's not hard to lower it on a rope without spilling. Garbage and trash were exactly the same as when we were in the water, with the bonus that we had a convenient place to dump both as many times as we wanted. It's a good idea to get rid of both, particularly the food scraps, as often as possible so that bugs don't find any food source. It's generally a bigger problem with bugs when you are on the hard than when you're in the water. Cooking is exactly the same as when you're in the water, except that I didn't have to deal with movement of the boat. In that sense, it was actually easier. Now, if you like to grill, ask the yard. Many have policies about grilling on the hard, particularly if you use charcoal. And be particularly vigilant in watching for critters like ants, cockroaches, and mice. Some yards are known for bad infestations, and they'll climb up the jack stands and ladders to get aboard. If you spot any, take action immediately. Now, another boat in the yard that first time taught us a great way to avoid those middle-of-the-night trips down the ladder to the bathroom. We got a five-gallon bucket with a lid and put it in the head as an overnight pee bucket. In the morning, we'd flush it down the toilet in the restroom. Now, of course, we have a composting head, and we can use it exactly like normal, basically. Now, while I'm not going to say that I just loved living on the heart, it wasn't nearly as bad as I had anticipated. While the quality of work and price are bigger considerations in choosing a yard, don't totally overlook the facilities for living aboard. And always be sure to ask about it, as there are some yards that prohibit it. A good shower facility and a place to wash dishes can go a long ways in how you feel about your stay, as well as access to grocery stores, chandleries, and even the cruiser social scene if you're going to be there more than just a few days. I hope you found this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast to be useful. If so, please tell your friends about it and be sure to subscribe. <music>